Hello and a very warm welcome to Rajya Sabha's special edition to celebrate International Women's Day, a day which has assumed new global dimension for women across developed and developing countries. The growing international women's movement, supported by United Nations Women Conferences, made it a rallying point to build support for women's rights in economic and political arenas of life. And in this year, that's 2014, the official theme of United Nations to celebrate Women's Day is equality for women is progress for all. The day to celebrate and glorify the importance of women and womanhood. Although much has been done in the world to highlight the fact that women must enjoy the equal rights, opportunities and respect as men do, the International Women's Day is perhaps among the few days in the year during which the importance of women is acknowledged, glorified and celebrated at its best. The fact is that Yes, we will continue the struggle for women's equality, for women's rights, because if, if half of us are held back, then we can never succeed. For this world's success, we all should be treated with equality, with justice, and with love and with peace. Over the years, ordinary women have assumed extraordinary roles in the history of their countries and communities. Today, let's reflect on their progress and salute the acts of courage, valor, and determination. Let's take a trip back to how it all started. At the turn of the century, the industrialized world was in a state of ferment. It was a time of intense expansion. Population was increasing, conservative ideologies were being relentlessly questioned. On 8th March 1857, women textile workers in New York City staged a protest. They demanded humane working conditions and better wages. The protesters were dispersed by the police. Two years later, once again in March, the women came together. This time, they formed a labor union, the first of its kind. The idea was to gain some protection and a few basic rights in the workplace. The women adopted the slogan of bread and roses. Bread symbolized economic security, while the roses stood for a better quality of life. Nineteen hundred and ten was the next important year in the fight for women's rights when socialist organizations around the world assembled in Copenhagen, Denmark. Then, in 1913, at the height of a peace movement, Brewing on the threshold of World War I, Russian women observed their first International Women's Day on the last day of February. The next year, around 8th March, European women took out rallies, either in protest against the war or to express solidarity with their sisters. After 1977, at the invitation of the United Nations General Assembly, member states adopted March 8 as International Women's Day to celebrate the cause of women's rights and world peace. The issues related to development and growth of women and the challenges before them uh, to get uh, those issues resolved and uh, at the same time the way out from there uh, this is the day on which we identify these three areas. International Women's Day is the day to take stock of lives of women in our country. Over the course of many millennia, the status of women has seen dramatic changes in India. From enjoying equality with men in the ancient times 
through the laws of medieval period to the era of emancipation and promotion of equal rights, the journey of Indian women has been an eventful one. India is the original home of Mother Goddess. Ancient history has many instances of women scholars and rulers who changed the life of people. Mythology and folklore tells us that women in India were always honored and respected. No other country or religion in the world worships women in the form of Shakti, Saraswati and Lakshmi. It was in the medieval period that the position of women deteriorated in India. Child marriages, prohibition of widow remarriage, concepts like sati and johar became part of the social life of communities. बहुत गलत बात हुई। वो क्यों शुरू हुई कि जैसे माना गया कि महिला को विद्या ग्रहण करने या शिक्षा लेने का, एजुकेशन लेने का भी कोई हक नहीं माना गया। और ये जो नहीं माना गया ये मैं मानती हूं कि स्त्री को पीछे धकेलने में बहुत बड़ा कारण रहा द मॉडर्न एरा चेंज द थिंकिंग अबाउट वुमेन The freedom struggle leveled the playing field somewhat. Women shouldered critical responsibilities. They held public meetings, sold khadi, took part in the national movement. They faced police batons and went to jail. Hundreds and thousands of Indian women dedicated their lives to freeing their motherland. Bikaji Kama, Vijaya Lakshmi Pandit, Rajkumari Amrit Kaur, Aruna Asaf Ali, Sucheta Kriplani, Kasturba Gandhi, Lakshmi Sagar were a few of the pioneers. It was understood that unless women played a role in this movement, this movement would be uh, somehow diminished. So it was not just an add-on for decoration that we also wanted to show that there are a few women. In fact, Sarojini Naidu, a poet, was the first woman to become president of Indian National Congress. She was also the first woman to become a state governor. Time for a short break. The journey shall continue when we return. Post independence, the role of women evolved with many changes in the thought currents. So much so that today it doesn't matter if a woman is an engineer, a real estate developer, army major or a politician. All these fields were male-dominated at one point of time. Women are breaching male bastions and creating a dent in their chosen fields. In the last few decades, laws have changed. In turn, these have changed the norms and the role of women. The traditional responsibilities of wife and mother have widened to include employment and careers outside their homes. Contemporary women are active partners in the economic and social development of the nation. Modern Indian uh, woman is the woman who is uh, confident, who is no-nonsense, who knows her rights, who is uh, you know, willing to fight her own battle.
the Indian sportswoman is a work in progress. Over the last decade, she has taken phenomenal strides. From amateur, she has gone on to professional. She's as comfortable on the court and track as she is in her designer clothes or fit. The Indian Army, Air Force and Navy, long considered male-dominated workplaces, now have confident, bold women essaying duties of every kind. Policing is no exception. Intelligence plays a greater role in criminal investigation rather than physical strength and women are proving just that. In the media, women are no longer confined to soft issues like culture, art and lifestyle. Their reportage includes hard political and economic stories. Their entry in increasing numbers is challenging pigeonholed attitudes and traditional gender hierarchies in the profession. I think we must credit media for bringing out the woman that it is today, the Indian woman. Because, uh, you know, media gave them the confidence. You know, the media gave them the confidence that they can go out and achieve. So media gave the women the platform, I think. And if media hadn't happened in India, the story of today's women in India would have been extremely different. For quite some time now, women are using their mathematical and economic skills beyond the scope of managing their home finances and their children's homework. They are heading the top banks in our country, both public and private, and edging past their male colleagues to the top posts. Major Indian banks have highly qualified young Indian women in the administrative levels. Their numbers are growing and the decisions they take are creating a difference to the economy. Yes, Indian women are seizing all the opportunities that the banking sector offers. I have been very fortunate that I have worked in companies where uh, meritocracy was recognized very early and it was possible to excel in what one did because the environment enabled you to and the rewards came because you were good at what you did. Uh, I can't recall a single situation where a promotion was held back or that uh, uh, my compensation in any way fell short of what my male colleagues were getting. Indian women are breaking stereotypes and corporate profiles to turn entrepreneurs. It's just not about beauty, fashion, cinema, education. Their entrepreneurial ventures cover hard-nosed business fields of real estate, iron, steel, cement and infrastructure sectors. I think being very uh, focused on what I wanted to do and maybe a lot of people have felt that you know I would not succeed in doing so but I think it's when you have decided yourself to do that and I've gone ahead and done that. It's just not the educated urban women. Women from small towns and villages are also turning entrepreneurs. Setting up independent businesses or simply working as a domestic help, labourer and earning a livelihood to support their families. No mother or wife works by clock. Services she renders to her family, husband and children is out of sheer love and affection, which cannot be equated or compensated by any amount of money. It is often said that being a homemaker is a thankless job. There's not 
enough appreciation, no real bonuses, no one offers a raise. The work doesn't stop from the time your eyes open in the morning to the moment they shut really at night. But rearing children, cooking meals for the family, the contribution made by a wife or mother to her family is invaluable and can't be computed in terms of money. I am professionally qualified. I wanted to go and get a job outside. I liked my husband and my children and family because this is the feeling of it. There is no value in it. To play with them, 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 to play with them. Time for a short break. Lots more on the other side. Society is changing in a way that it accepts women as professionals, as bread earners, as an independent individuals. But is the picture really all that rosy? Female feticide, dowry deaths, acid attacks, rapes and domestic abuse. That's the macabre face of modern India. Figures show that women are the victims and survivors of barbaric and primitive male mindsets. Married women, whether in urban or rural India, take only around 25 to 30% decisions. Just 7 to 12% are about buying major household items. 10 to 12% are about visiting family or relatives. As many as 46% in the ages of 15 to 19 years are not involved in any decision making at all. Less than 40% women have access to money. Cruelty by husbands and relatives is directed at 43.4% women, the most widespread crime against women, which is followed by molestation. Only 10.4% cases of brutality went through a trial last year. Conviction was secured in just 8.3% cases, which is why today women carve foremost for a safe environment. As I'm 25 years old right now, but then, you know, it's always been that concern has always been there with the parents, with, you know, within friends when we talk, you know, whether we should go out at a certain place, whether, you know, timings, etc., the clothes that we are wearing, that, that, you know, these are things which come up. Are we really empowered? Are we empowering women in that? Or are we actually providing them an enabling environment? Is something which we need to actually think upon that. Membership of women comes to 11% in the Lok Sabha and 10.6% in the Rajya Sabha. The Women's Reservation Bill aimed for a larger representation in Lok Sabha and the state assemblies. But it hit roadblocks in Parliament before the Rajya Sabha cleared the historic measure. For the Parliament, I don't know why the uh, male partners, they are afraid of it. So anyhow, it is passed by the Rajya Sabha, but Lok Sabha, it, is, it was really very difficult. We wanted this in this session, in this session. When I was uh, uh, chief chief of my party also, I was pushing it up. I would pray to God, and I still do pray to God uh, on this issue, that um, I think every party should give tickets to women. The recognition, the opportunity, the access, all these things to women. Or if you uh, uh, look at the, the way women are denied the uh, constitutional rights, these are all very important concerns or very crucial issues. Women today dominate so many fields. They can take credit for innumerable achievements, opportunities, that were once just a dream are now well within grasp. अपने साथ अपने समाज को लेकर चले, अपने आसपास जितने पुरुष हैं, उनकी मानसिकता को बदलने की जिम्मेवारी आपकी है। आप ये समझें कि उनको काट के और उनको दबा के आगे बढ़ जाऊं, तो वो करने को तो आप कर सकती हैं। लेकिन उनको अगर समझाया जाए, उनको सेंसिटाइज किया जाए कि उनकी जो सोच है वो गलत है और उस उस सोच को आप बदल सकती हैं अपने अपने काम से अपने व्यवहार से तो वो जरूर आपको ही करना चाहिए। One thing they think that you know that ladies are encroaching into their field, 
okay there is a saying that uh, lady surgeons are better at work than male surgeon but still it is uh, uh, in indian context maybe i think uh, for them it is little difficult to accept lady as a surgeon the tunnel that seemed so dark and impenetrable has now given way to a stairway to light the open society of acceptance and opportunity is within sight but we still have miles to go before we reach our destination stronger political will and more vibrant voices are needed to turn our commitments into reality that's all we have for you in this special edition stay tuned to rajasabha tv and thanks for watching <laughs>